Hello, Walter. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Good, and you? Doing great, teacher. Glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. It's not raining by you? No. Okay. Here, you live in San Salvador? You live in San Salvador? I live in La Libertad, but here, oh. it, here is raining pretty strong. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's affect your internet? No, I don't think so because usually the because I live in I live in Santa Tecla. Ah. So it's La Libertad, but it's close to, to the metropolitan area. So usually ah, okay. it's pretty stable. The, ah, nice, nice. The, the, the problem is that the noise. But the, I can hear a noise. No? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then it's only for me. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose uh, 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 later it's raining in Santa Ana, I think. I think. Yeah, I think it's going from San Salvador, then yeah. it, to yeah. here. To Santa Tecla, then Los Chorros, and then continue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good evening. Hey, good, good evening. evening. <laughs> All right. Again, because so. it goes out. <laughs> How are you, Sandra? Well, um, well, getting better, thanks, God. Getting better. Wow. Yeah. You, you start to feel healthy now? A little bit better? A little bit better, thanks, God. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. And I was in, in, in very, very what <sighs> afflicted because because my my service of internet was interrupt interrupted. Yeah. And because of lacking of payment, so I I had to run 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 to pay it, <laughs> and thanks God right now. They they gave me, uh, uh, well they they gave me gave me back the the, the service right uh, now. <laughs> imagine imagine, yes, it yeah. many times. Right. Oops. Don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. All right. I see we have um a couple people that may be having some problems. Guys, remember, if you cannot participate, it's no problem. It's no problem. Only you put oyente I, um, at the beginning of your name. This is because I know that it's raining in some areas, and sometimes your internet or you cannot communicate or different reasons. So if you know you have some problems, it's okay. Only put oyente like Katya and like Irena, and then we know that when we make the groups, ah, okay, this person cannot speak in this moment. They are working or problems or different areas. Okay? Okay. Well, I'm glad that everybody's here. Today, we are going to begin with our new topic about listening. Okay? So, before we begin with the listening for the TOEFL, I want you to tell me what do you understand are, is your objective or the things that you have to do in the listening section for the TOEFL? Como ahorita. Uh huh. So, well, uh, I no, suppose that, go ahead, Sandra. Uh, I suppose, yes, I suppose that, uh, as like in the other topics, we have uh, uh, maybe several, several type of ways or something like that uh, that we have to develop here. In order to to get new um new new what uh, uh, new techniques uh, for listen for listen strategies seconds. yeah mm -hmm. okay all right so just yes, exactly like the reading is not only reading right. Always uh -huh. is, they give you the name, reading, listening, but it's not the same. It's uh -huh. not the same read when you read a newspaper or a magazine than for the exam. The same for the listening. The listening is not the same. The listening, you need different techniques and different strategies because you have different questions. It's not only what did you understand. 
No. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the listening, there are different types of questions. And it's more difficult because you don't have time to analyze. In the mm -hmm. moment, you get it or you lost it. There is no, oh, I'm going to go back because the audios are only one time. All of the audios, only one time. Mm -hmm. ah, I was distracted. I didn't listen. I, I'm sorry. Only one time. And this is very important. Yes, Sandra. No, no. Well, only once you're going to hear. Only once. Oh God. Exactly. And this is the this usually is the area that is most difficult because yes. all of the other areas, even for the speaking, you have time to think. You have 30 seconds, you have moments to to analyze, to get. But in listening is the only area where you cannot go back because there is no listening again and you have to understand in the moment. Now I understand why. <laughs> Some people like listening only. Yeah, yeah. So today <laughs> I'm going to show you a few videos to help you understand the different types of questions. Yes. First, we're going to be learning about different types of questions in the TOEFL. This is our first part. Okay. The listening yeah. section. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, are you ready for the listening section? Great. In this section, you will find four types of listening questions. It is important for you to understand how these questions are structured and what they ask from you. Finally, you will have time to do some practices and to take another test. Okay. So, as you can see, we have four types of questions. Right? We have yes. function questions. Function questions. Attitude, attitude questions. Organization questions. Organization questions and connecting content questions. All of these are a little bit different. And today we're going to learn how they are different. And what do we need to do for each type of question? Okay. So the first one is function questions. We're going to learn what it is and how we can build it even better. Hi, welcome. We're going inside the TOEFL listening section. We'll begin with the function questions. Function questions ask you to identify the particular meaning of a statement in a given context because a statement can have different meanings depending on the situation. In other words, the real meaning is different from the surface or literal meaning. For example, if you're in a room with other people and someone says, it's getting hot in here, what they might really be saying is, could someone turn on the AC? You can recognize function questions because they include phrases like, what does the professor mean when he says? Or, why does the student say? Here's a tip for building your listening skills that can also help you with function questions. When listening to a passage, ask yourself what the speaker's really doing by saying certain things. The speaker may be doing things like directing, recommending, complaining, agreeing or disagreeing, questioning or confirming. When you know these types of intentions and that they often happen beneath the surface of what is said, they can help you identify the function of what is said more easily. Okay. Now you may take a look at the sample question. Before we look at the sample question, I just want to go back and reiterate. Okay. So, hang on, let me go back a little bit more. Okay. This is the important part. The function questions, they are different because you have to interpret the reason. You have to understand why they are saying those things, okay? Right? So, for example, it's not literal. It's not, oh, this is expensive. What does the speaker mean? It's, it costs a lot of money. No. You have to understand that, oh, as an example, if somebody say, oh, that's more than I expected. Oh, this means that the speaker thinks that the content or the item is too expensive. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of content question is interpreting why they say that. And that is where you need to ask this question. 
what the what they really might be saying. Okay, what are they trying to tell you? That's the most important part when we're trying to do these types of questions. We're gonna have a little bit of practice, like in the reading that we have right here. Hang on. We're gonna take. Let me go back just a little bit. Okay. These are some of the things that the speaker might be trying to do. So the speaker might be recommending something, complaining, directing, agreeing or disagreeing, or other options like questioning or confirming. Okay. This is very important for you to understand. Um, hey, it was a great weekend. This means are they what are they trying to say? This means the speaker had a good weekend or you had a good weekend, right? This is the idea for that type of question. Here, we have a little bit that we're going to hear, okay? I want you to read, take a moment. It, normally, we won't, we wouldn't have the opportunity to read, but I want you to read it, okay? Right here, Dr. Johnson and then the woman. Okay, so let me give you, right now we are reading and I want to explain to you why and how it happens. So in the exam, you're going to listen to the conversation. Dr. Johnson, would you, um, I need your signature. You're going to listen to that conversation. And then after you listen to the conversation, you will hear, well, Bill, a low grade indicates. And then after you hear that again, then you will hear the question. Why the, does prof what does the professor mean when she says, are you up to taking the course again? So as I was explaining to Sandra um, at the beginning of the listening, when we were talking about, yes, you hear the conversation one time, but you have the opportunity to listen to that section one more time because they play it for you. And then the question is with the listening again, that. So you don't have to understand all of the conversation, but you have to get an idea of what they are talking about because little by little, they make the question more and more difficult, okay? So for example, if Walter only listen, are you taking, are, are you up to taking the course? If he doesn't have the conversation, he doesn't understand. So this is the part of the listening. You have to get the main idea so that when you have the specific question, you know what is the content and what they are trying to ask you. Okay. So are you up to taking the course? In this case is she is concerned a man doesn't have the background knowledge to do well. And remember, whenever you hear that is why did she say that? What does she try to mean from that? Okay. That's the idea of this type of question. Any, it's okay or any questions? Uh, no, it's right. It is. It's, okay. It's question. Okay, good. Let's take a look at our next one. That is the first type, which is called function questions. Remember, we have four types. Now we're going to go to part two, attitude questions. Let's look at number two, attitude questions. Attitude. Attitude. Hi, welcome to the listening section, especially the attitude questions. 
Attitude questions ask you to show understanding of the speaker's attitude or their feelings about something. You can recognize attitude questions because they include phrases like, what is the professor's attitude? What does the student think about? What can be inferred? Recognizing the question type. To identify the speaker's attitude, listen for phrases like, what I think, or it seems to me, in the lecture or conversation. The attitude question will then refer to how valid the speaker's argument is or how sure of the facts the speaker is. Remember, when you're answering attitude questions, listen for the tone of the speaker's voice. Here's a listening tip that will help you with attitude questions. As you practice your listening skills, you will start noticing each speaker's style and their tone of voice. Then ask yourself these questions. Is the speaker's voice calm or emotional? relaxed or nervous, certain or confused, enthusiastic or bored. What does the speaker's tone of voice tell you? Watching comedy television shows is a good way to practice recognizing a speaker's tone of voice. Now you may go on watching a sample question. Okay, let me go back. So we can take a look at these two types. One moment. Sample question. Okay. So there is our first sample, okay? So here is not only about the words. This is a part that is very important to understand the intonations. You have to understand the intonations if it's somebody is happy, sad, angry, they have an attitude. That is the part where you need to listen carefully to be able to understand, oh, is that annoyed? Is that angry? Is that doubtful or confused or irritated? That's the function of these types of questions. So what is the difference? Attitude is about listening for the tones, listening not only for the words, but ah, did you, uh, why did the speaker breathe heavily? It's because they are not happy. That is the type of things for this type of question. Are we okay with attitude questions? Oh, wow, yes. 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 Right, okay. It's just like in the Spanish, like when we have sarcasm, right? In Spanish, oh, que bonita te ve. Ah, it's the same idea. You, is not the words, is the tone, is how they say it that changes the meaning. That's going to be the difference. And here we have another little example so that you can see. Here is another one, okay? And you're going to see the type of question is going to say like that. What can be inferred? What does the speaker mean? What does the speaker talk? That is the idea for those types of questions. Okay, so let's read the part of the professor. Sandra, can you please read a, the part of the professor? Oh, yes, sir. Um, okay, now I would like to have you get into groups of three or four. I'm going to pass out an assignment sheet and I would like you to decide in, in your group how you are going to approach the problem. Uh, see in, what, what, see? Seen in the handout. Mm -hmm. Seen in the handout. <laughs> I think the handout is self-explanatory, but if you have questions, I'd like you to work out a solution of your own. Okay, good. You, so you, then you will hear what can be inferred about the professor. And then you have the four options. Walter, can you please read the four options? Okay, teacher. You read in here. What can be inferred about the professor. Letter A, he wants a student to make a group decision without his help. Letter B, he does not expect his student to understand his explanations. Letter C, he wants the student to come to the solution he thinks is correct. Letter D, he is not concerned with helping the student learn how to approach problems. 
Okay. So what can be inferred? Well, when we listen, we saw, I think the handout is self-explanatory. But if you have questions, I'd like you to work out a solution of your own. So that means don't ask me questions. That means you have to solve it. So it's letter A. He wants the students to make the decision without his help. That is the purpose of self-explanatory and work out a solution of your own. Okay, so that's it. So it's not only the words, but what is he trying to say? He's trying to say, oh, it, the professor wants the students to be independent. The professor wants the students to ask him questions. That, and that is the idea of this type of questions. What is he telling them? Okay, that is the attitude. Now we have organization questions. Here we have a little bit about organization questions. Hi, welcome back. This time we'll go over organization questions. Organization questions ask you to show understanding of how a lecture is structured. You can recognize organization questions because they often include phrases such as, why does the professor mention? Or, why does the professor discuss? These kinds of phrases show that organization questions are often asked about the examples in a lecture. So it helps to listen for examples and think about why the professor is using them. Now let's look at a sample question. Oh my God. Don't worry, I'm pausing it. And don't worry, we're gonna go back, it's very fast. Okay, here we go, one more time. Now let's look at a sample question. Okay, so snow is a fantastic insulator. As the Inuits, however, the extraordinary efficiency of snow of snow as an insular makes it difficult to find a person buried in an avalanche. Narrator, why does the speaker mention the Inuits? Because what? So the idea is, why did he mention that? Why the example of those? Those are the types of questions you get, is why did the person talk about that? Okay. So not only here, snow, the topic is snow. But if the topic is no, why add this extra content? Oh, and that's the idea. Because the Inuit people live in a snowy climate. They would, therefore, they would know a lot about the properties of snow. Hey, pero ticho, yo no sé, nunca he escuchado Inuit. Oh, so then that is the problem where you have difficulty. Because they're going to add you. If, example, if you didn't know what were Inuits, then you cannot answer the question. Are they Eskimo? They are similar Eskimos. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Similar to the Eskimos. So that's why it's important that I don't understand. I need to put in my own letters about meaning, about yeah. Inuit. I need to write something? No. In no. That part of the exam, teacher? Not usually. And the exam is multiple choice and you select which one is correct. Mm -hmm. They're always going to give you different options. And that is the good part. Because if you don't know what are Inuits, but if you have a concept of the conversation, you can extrapolate, okay, Inuits is something, right? Are they dogs? Are they animals? Are they? And then you can get a better idea of which option is the best one. Okay, okay. okay. Let's take a look. Here's a listening tip that can help you understand how a lecture is organized. Listen for signal words that indicate that introduction, mere ideas, examples, and the conclusion or summary. These might be sequence words like first, next, and then, or they might indicate time or chronology like before, during, or since, or they could show cause and effect like accordingly or as a result. These signal words are good cues for when to take notes. Skill building tips. Listen for signal words. 
Introduction, major ideas, examples, conclusion. First, next, then, second, finally. After, at last, before, during, now, since, obviously, of course, accordingly, as a result, because, for example, for instance, in conclusion, to summarize. Okay. That's a lot of words to remember. It's a lot of words to remember for the listening. Let's be honest. It's a lot. So my tip is always when they give an example, pay attention. Because that's the idea. Always when they give an example, why this example? Why this dog? Why this person? Why this triad? Why this language? Always there's going to be the type of question of, why did the professor mention Italian? Why did the professor mention uh, Rockwaller dogs? It's usually this. So yes, you can try to remember those words, but in my experience, <laughs> the most important is always pay attention to the examples that they give you. Because in the examples is usually where they get the question from. They normally don't get the question from the basic information. They try, they want to make sure you understand why they gave that example. Okay. So when we talk like in El Salvador and we say, oh, uh, pizza in El Salvador is very popular and very relatively cheap. Little Caesars has one for $5. Um, that's why many Salvadorians eat pizza. Why did the professor mention Little Caesars? And that's it. So when the moment you hear a name, a country, a, something like an example, you almost always are going to be asked this in the question. So then in that moment, start thinking, okay, why? Why this example? How this example, and pay attention, how this example help you in the rest of the listening. It's okay for this type of questions? Yes. Don't worry, we're gonna practice all of them. We're gonna practice all of them, okay. but the important first to understand the concepts of the different types of questions. Remember, we have three types so far. Right now we have function questions. What is the speaker really trying to say or do? We have attitude, where is listening about the emotions of the speaker. We have organization question, why they give the examples. And then we have connecting content questions. Here's the last type of question we get. Finally, on this course, we'll take a look at listening connecting content questions. Listening connecting content questions ask you to show understanding of the relationship among ideas in a lecture. Connecting content questions may require you to fill in a chart or table, or they may ask things like, what is the likely outcome? These type of questions will ask you to put together information from different sentences or different parts of the conversation or lecture. You may be asked to identify things like steps in a process or cause effect relationships, or you may be asked to classify items in categories or make a prediction connecting content questions, steps in a process, cause and effect, classification, make a prediction. Now let's look at a sample connecting content question. Okay, this one, let's take our time and read it together to make sure that it's clear. Who would like to be the man and who would like to be the woman to read this conversation? I'm me, I'm in. Thank you, Walter. I, I will, uh... Okay. Pardon? Thank you very much, Yancy. Okay. Can you start? Yes. Why hasn't Frank come yet? He told me he had better first thing in the morning. I'm sorry. Didn't I tell you he called and say he couldn't make it until this afternoon? No, you didn't. What time did he say he'd be here? About four o'clock. Four o'clock? That's me while be working on this report until midnight. 
Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. Janse, can you please continue reading the question? What did Frank tell the woman about getting together to work on the report? Choose mm -hmm. to answer. Ah, now you see, now we have more difficult because yeah. now, not one, not, <laughs> not only one. Now we have two. Okay. So remember, what did Frank tell the woman? Here, the man that is speaking is not Frank. The mm -hmm. man, the Frank is the man that called. So what did he tell the woman? That he'd be there first thing in the morning? That he couldn't make it first thing in the morning? <clears throat> in the afternoon? Yes. Or he could stay from 4 o'clock until midnight? Well, we know. He couldn't make it. Correct. Go, Yancy. He couldn't. He couldn't make it first thing in the morning. That's the first and, thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. This, and he could he could stay from four o'clock until midnight. No. That one. And, you, need to. you need to choose two answers? Yes, Yancy. But your answers are not correct. The answer no? is not no. Because Frank, Frank did not say that. The other man. The, the man other man. Thinking, okay. He said, I, four o'clock. That means we'll be working on this report until midnight. But Frank did not say that to the woman. Frank only said, I can't come in the morning. I will be there at four o'clock in the afternoon. So yes. the correct is letter B and C because it's for what did Frank say? No, what did the man interpret? Mm. Yes, he will come. Mm -hmm. okay. It's as an example. Guys, tomorrow I have, a, a, I cannot, I cannot give the class. What did you understand? We have class on Friday or there will be another teacher or the class is canceled. Ooh. <laughs> That's, uh huh. That is the part. That's where it's, you have to think. What did he say? A, the class is canceled. And B, he has an appointment. I did not say we will come to class on Friday. And I did not say another teacher will give the class. And that's where you have to be clear of no interpreting, which is the questions before. Here is no interpreting. Here is what happened. A little bit different. Not happy. Mm -hmm. oh, what did the person actually please. say? My hands are running wrong. Continue wrong. <laughs> Continue wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. We got a little bit more. Don't worry. Okay. I think we have one more sample. Let me check. Here's a tip to help you connect ideas when you listen. When you listen to recorded material for the first time, Stop the recording at various points and try to summarize what has been said. Then predict what will be said next. Okay. Now, that is very good when you are studying, but in the exam, you cannot stop the recording and you cannot make more predictions. In the exam is everything you have to do in the moment. Listen in the moment, interpret in the moment, I'll comprehend and make a decision. Today, we're going to practice those listening questions. Not all of them, but we're going to begin getting the idea. The first one we're going to do is the function question. Jenny, what is the technique or what do we have to do in function questions? What the person doing. Okay, so what is the person doing? What are they really saying? That is the first one, right? If I say, Walter, it's very hot here. What am I saying? I need to open the door. I want to put on more clothes. I would like, that is the idea of the function question. What is the speaker trying to communicate to you? Okay. That is the first thing that we're going to do. 
So let's take a look and let's have our function questions. Let's listen together and try to answer the first one. So as always, what is the first thing that we do, Walter? We try to do always, always before listening, before reading, before the question, what do we try to do? I read the answer. That's right. Automatically, yes, you are listening, but before you want to get quickly and try to get at least an idea of what you are listening for. Okay. Sue, you know you missed the deadline, don't you? Yes, I know, but could I get my report in by early next week? Well, I'm not so concerned about deadlines as such. We all have setbacks from time to time. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm more concerned about your getting behind in general. I've seen students get so far behind that they can't catch up. If you can't keep up in this course, you're really wasting my time and your time and money. If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. If you can't keep up in this course, you're really wasting my time and your time and money. If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. What does the professor mean when he says this? If that's the case, Sue, you should drop now while you can before it's too late to drop without penalties. Hmm. Why did he say that? 10, 9, 8, 7, C. 6, 5, 4, C. 3, C. 2, 1. And that's it. That is the maximum amount of time you have to make a decision. Be careful with that. Remember, we discuss always, yes. You want to answer correctly, but always you are ooh, with the time, with the time, with the time, with the time, because it's not like a normal conversation. I heard many people say, see, he is worried that the missed deadline is a symptom of the students not being able to keep up. Okay. Or I heard some people say letter D. He is certain that the woman is too far behind to catch up and should drop the course. What is the final decision? C or D? Maybe D. C. Okay. All right. We'll check in a moment. Okay. And as you can see, we have two more. Super easy. We're going to do them together to make sure that it's clear for everyone. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's read the next one. Number two. Uh, Nicole, can you please read the different options? A, B, C, and D. Sure. A. The students will see an obvious relationship immediately. B, the statistics will be really interesting for the students. C, the students will have difficulty inter interpreting, interpreting the statistics. D, the students will be able to see the projections of the transparency better, better than what is written on the board. Okay, let's listen. And what does the professor try to say? Okay, now that I have all your decisions, your individual and group decisions written on the board, I want to show you this transparency of the, um, each choice has a risk factor. So here are the statistics showing how risky, how much of a gamble each of the alternatives is. So take a moment to compare the risk values with the choices you made kind of jumps out at you. Yes, Jason? Well, the individual decisions within each group are, well, not always, but they tend to be less risky than the decision the group made. Right. Do you see how, as individuals, most of you were not willing to take the gamble, but as a group, you were? The term for this phenomenon is risky shift. Risky shift a shift in position from less risky to more risky. If we were to average the risk factor of the group's individual members, it usually, but not always, shows that 
individuals are more cautious about taking a gamble, while a group decision has a higher risk. So what implications does this have? Think about business and political decisions in particular. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. So take a moment to compare the risk values with the choices you made. What kind of jumps out at you? What does the professor mean when she says this? What kind of jumps out at you? So which one would be the option? What kind of jumps out at you? What is she trying to tell us? Letter A. Okay, letter A. Does everybody agree? Yes, letter A. Letter A. Okay, good, letter A. And now the last one. Don't worry, we're going to check in just a moment, but great ideas. Here we go. Let's read the last one. Always the same technique. Try to get the questions. Today we're reading a little bit slow, but the idea is always try to read first. Helen, can you please read the options? Sure. Um, A, he's showing the woman his excitement on getting the information. B, he is telling the woman that the that he thinks he she's teasing him. C, he's letting the woman know that he considers what she said to be untrue. And D, he is asking for confirmation about his understanding of what the woman said. Okay. Now, when we do this, there are always two ways to do it. You can try to do it like the way that we are doing it right now which is reading the questions before the listening, or when you listen to the conversation in the second part where they say, now you'll listen to part of a lecture. In that moment, you already listened to it. So in that moment, you can read the question. So in the third time where they say, why does the professor say this? You already have the questions and you know why the professor says that. You can choose whichever option you feel more comfortable with. I personally always try to get at least a little bit of an idea before to make sure I, it's better for me what I'm listening for. But we try here this one. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand. But if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? So why did he say, really? I could do that, could I? Letter D. Letter D. Okay, letter D. All right. Very nice and excellent interpretations. As you can see, all our answers are correct. And that's the fun <laughs> questions of how you need to do it in the exam. You need to make sure that it's clear for you, the function questions, interpret the information. Why do they say that? What is the purpose of that? Okay. Now let's take a look and make sure that we are clear. It's okay for function questions. Okay, I think everybody, yes, because everybody is quiet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, let's go. Yes. For, let's go for our attitude questions. Here, 
you have to listen for the tone. How is the tone? Ooh, this is where it's more delicate because this is for relationships. How do you interpret if somebody is happy, sad, except you listen for the woman? Is she critical or is she offended? One. Aren't you a little old to be reading comic books? Hey, this isn't just any comic book. It's a Walt Disney classic. Classic or not, this is a university. I'll have you know that this is required reading for my American popular culture course. What? I, I can't believe it. Here I am reading stacks of major works by important authors, um, Dickens and Tolstoy, for my survey of 19th century literature course. And you're reading comic books? Well, this isn't the only required reading material in the course. We have to read a lot about the events that influence the comic book writers and study contemporary art movements and how women and minorities are depicted in uh, comics and other pop art, this course isn't as easy as you think. Hmm. Two. So, in number one, is the woman offended or critical? Critical. Mm. Critical. Okay. Critical. Okay. Critical. We'll go with critical. No problem. Now, number two. Well, Jane, how was your first day of classes? Great. I signed up for an American history course. It's about the Revolutionary War. Okay, let me try it again. I think we had a little issue there. Mm-hmm. One. Aren't you a little old to be reading comic books? Two. Well, Jane, how was your first day of classes? Great. I signed up for an American history course. It's about the Revolutionary War period with Professor Lewis. He's fantastic. Uh, history sounds boring to me. I never did like history. How can you find history boring when, oh, I guess you never had a teacher like Dr. Lewis. He describes the events so vividly that it seems as though you're actually there, like caught up in the issues. You would really get into it. Well, maybe. Oh, come on. Why don't you take it? It's not too late to add a course. Well, I don't need it for my major, and there are other courses I'd rather take as electives. So, number two. Is the man giving or the man defensive? The man defensive. Defensive. Okay. Good. We have a couple more. Remember, here we have lots of them, lots of them. It's all about what you get. Okay. So, for this one, as you can see, we did number one and two together. I'll show you in this moment, just before, what we're going to do now that we are clear. We are going to make the partners, and with our partners, we want to discuss and analyze what do we understand. Do you understand? We is the person is this or this. There are only two options, but you want to make a good interpretation and understand why. Okay. So in the listening part two, we're going to have our partners. You listen and you discuss which one do you think for each. Okay. Okay? Okay, sir. All right. Excellent. Let's give you a few minutes. There we go.
happier than here, so I'm home to see you folks. And how are they? Oh, just fine. Good, good. And uh, how do you like your program? Of course. And there are other courses I'd rather take as electives. That is the next one. Hi. Dr. Reed, are you busy? Hi, Donna. So you've come back to visit your own university, have you? Yeah. Our midterm break starts a few days earlier than here, so I'm home to see my folks. And how are they? Oh, just fine. Good. Good. And uh, how do you like your program? Hey, it's great. It's a lot of work, though. You know, well, now that you're at the doctor's level, you can expect that. Yes, of course. And Dr. Jennings is... Do you know Dr. Jennings? Of him, yes, not personally. Uh -huh. Well, he's arranging for a field study group to work in oh. Easter Island over the semester break. I signed up to go. Fantastic. That'll be a great experience. I'd like to hear more about it, but I have a class in a few minutes. It's good to see you, Donna. Maybe you could pop into my office tomorrow afternoon, say about 2.30? Sure. Okay. And number three? The woman is sympath sympathetic or excited? Excited. Excited. Okay. And number four, continue. Hi. Good morning. Can I have him? Yeah. Will I see about the complaints? Well, um, that would be me. Danielle, Vanessa, are you guys okay? Yes, teacher. I'm trying to share the audio. No. But my computer. My computer. Mm. Or maybe William can share or Vanessa. Okay, uh, I would try. Are we together? It's the same. Okay. Okay, the woman is overworked or enthusiastic. I heard her enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Yeah, I think it's the same audio, yeah? Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think. The man is welcoming or welcoming. annoying. <laughs> he sounds annoyed. He sounds annoyed. Annoyed. Right. Welcoming. Welcoming. I don't know, what is the difference welcoming and annoy? I have anything. That is my question. That is my question. <laughs> welcoming. Yeah, what is the, 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 the difference? Welcoming and annoyed. Um, annoyed is almost angry. Angry, right. The, the man sounds angry because the, the, war, the, the walls is dirty, the refrigerator doesn't work. I remember that. I don't know. What do you think, Andrea? I oh. think it's annoying. Okay. To, but... okay. The man is upset or surprised? Upset. 
I've said this exercise. Yes. Yes, I think just this one. Only act actitude question. Yes. Uh -huh. act question. Okay. I finish. Okay. So what do you okay. think? Is easy or difficult? Uh, it's easy, but the number six for me is now welcoming. It's annoying. Yeah, the man sound a little angry, right? Not like, hey, come in. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 We might be thinking, I don't know if some audio is missing or the options are incorrect because like the man wasn't welcoming at all. You know, he was like pretty mad, I would say. Yeah, he sounded a little mad because when I listened to it, I thought, hmm, that's not like a happy sound. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. And I thought it was annoyed too. But then I said, okay, I think maybe they they mix the options. They put in the wrong option for the answer. Yeah, yeah that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the same thing happened in a number four. The man is uh uninterested. But we thought that he was worried because he uh, his apartment wasn't uh wasn't uh well prepared for living in there. Mm hmm. Exactly. So sometimes it's a little weird. And, you know, that's the hard part about this type of question is that many times your interpretation is not the same interpretation from another culture. The Latin Americans, we speak very loudly. Yes. <laughs> naturally, naturally. But for other cultures, when they speak loudly, we, they are angry. They are upset. So. <laughs> You have to you have to try to balance uh, the English, but the English not for the culture, the English for the way that it's interpreted in the other cultures. Okay, great. I was just talking to one group and just something that's very important. We're going to check the answers in this moment, but also a little bit of information or tip. Remember, this exam is designed by Americans or Europeans. This means that their culture is different. Why do I mention it? Specifically with some of the things of the interpretation of the emotions. Like for us, somebody that sounds angry is different than for the Americans. Why? Because for the Americans, eh, Sofia Vergara is very angry, but she is Hispanic. And for us, she only speaks loudly. But for them, uy, she's upset. She's angry. So you have to be careful when interpreting these types of questions. Okay? Remember, always put into account the culture is it for them this most of the time is the same but there's a little bit of times a few moments where maybe you're not going to have the same answer because we have different perspective Sabrina. okay but as you can see all of the answers number one the correct critical two defensive three excited four uninterested <laughs> excuse me number five enthusiastic number six welcoming and seven upset and the final one helpful okay. mm -hmm. that's about the number six yes this is the the context is for specifically for number six because yeah. we were thinking that maybe there was a mistake in the option because to be honest he i don't care what culture you are that's not <laughs> welcoming it's not welcoming it's it's a little upset it's a little okay. angry okay <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's the idea so thank you so much for connecting today i'm glad that we are practicing a little bit more listening these are the first two types of questions for listening tomorrow we're going to practice the other two types and continue practicing more listening exercises. Okay. okay.
Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.